Praise the Lord, everybody. I'll give thanks unto the Lord for he is good, for his mercy and good forever. Thank the Lord for another time for us to gather and, and to dove into the word of the Lord. Uh, Sister Bess, if you don't mind, could you lead us in prayer? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our sins and our debts as we forgive our debtors. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this day that you have made. We thank you, Lord God, for forgiving us of our sins. We thank you, Lord, for this, this marvelous Zoom that you gave us right in the nick of time. We thank you, Lord, that we're still able to assemble and to communicate with our fellow church members. We thank you, Lord, for keeping us safe. We thank you for your healing power. We thank you, Lord, for your power, your, your strength, your blessings, your peace, your love that passes all understanding. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you will perfect those things that concern us in every area of our lives, spiritually, physically, mentally, and financially. Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus over our children and our grandchildren, Lord, over our pastor, Lord, Bishop Merritt, and his first family, and Lord, all the members, including the ministers and the leaders of the church. Father, we thank you for being a great source and a marvelous provider. We thank you for being shelter from the storm, food on the table. We thank you for everything and all the benefits that you provide your children. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you for that wonderful prayer. Amen. We appreciate that. We're going to go ahead and get started in our lesson. And as I was saying tonight, uh, my voice may give out a little bit. So I think we just all would just kind of, you know, come in and say what needs to be said and kind of help teach together. Amen. Praise the Lord, sister. Uh, Dr. Crook, and praise the Lord, everybody tonight. I'm going to go ahead and read um, the passage of scripture in which we'll be coming from tonight. Passage, scripture, our topic is praise God with music, praise God with music. And of course, by the end of this lesson, we will compare the reason for and the expression of praising God in two Psalms. We'll gain spiritual inspiration by various types of praise, music, and hymns and praise God using the Psalms. So we'll be reading the key uh, verse here is that everything that hath breath, praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord, Psalms 150 and six. So our scripture uh, for tonight, the focus verses is Psalms 149 and one, Psalms 150, one through six. Praise ye the Lord, sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him, let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with a timbrel and harp. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. And as Psalm 149, one through five, and then we have Psalm 150, 1 through 6. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals and praise upon him upon the high sounding cymbals that everything that hath breath Praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord. So as we look at the background of this song, we just want to bring into a little area in reference to 
the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms is 150 spiritual songs and poems used by the church in all ages in worship and devotional exercises. And it was used as the hymn book of the second temple. Psalms is basically um, is dealing with song or songs that was sung. Uh, and the, the predominant themes are prayer and praise. We know that as we look at the Psalms, there's a lot of Psalms that are written by the various authors of this book. Um, and there are psalms of praise, psalms of prayer, uh, psalms of exhortation, but they all also deal with the emotional side of mankind. And so they're quoted from frequently, they're quoted more frequently in the New Testament than any other book except Isaiah. And they're often called the Psalms of David because he was the author of the larger number of them. But there are other authors that was uh, that writ that were that have written uh, some of the psalms, and so that means it was David had seventy three that it was attributed to him. Then you got the sons of Korah, Asaph, Heman, Ethan, Solomon, uh, Moses, Haggai, Zechariah, uh, Hezekiah, and Ezra, and the remainder of them was anonymous. So this is a very very um, intrigued uh, book. And a lot of people, they immediately go to the Psalms for help. Like if they need a quick scripture of encouragement, a quick scripture of a, a praise, or even doing devotions and different things, people usually allude right to the Psalms. And um, so we just wanted to bring that information out about the Psalms. Now, uh, of course, the Psalms really, this particular Psalms deals with a lot of praise and worship using musical instruments as well as us, uh, the people being the instruments of praise where the sound sounds come up out of us giving praise and worship unto the Lord. And one of the key words in the Psalms is the Hebrew word, hallelujah, meaning praise the Lord. Now, hallelujah, basically is praise the, and then Yah means Lord. And of course, it also symbolizes for the Hebrew people would always say Jehovah, praise Jehovah during that time. So we're gonna go uh, into, and a little bit later on, I'll be showing you a, a PowerPoint about the different instruments that, uh, that we use, but also similar to the instruments that were used in the Bible. So we'll get to that in a little while. So, <clears throat> excuse me, Psalms, when we look at the scripture in Psalms 149, praise you the Lord, sing unto the Lord a new song, and is praising the congregation of the saints. Both Psalms 149 and 150 begin with a command. We have to know that whenever their psalms are the songs that are sung, it's always a command. Praise ye the Lord. It didn't say, will you praise the Lord? but it's saying, praise ye the Lord. And it seemed like even when you say the word, praise ye the Lord, it's something to it. Not the greeting that we use, praise the Lord, but the command in giving God praise. It's a celebration, our, our thanks unto the Lord. And uh, so the Hebrew term for this praise is similar. Hala, hala, H-A-L-A-H -H or H-A-W-L-A-H. Is the, base, is the basis of hallelujah and literally means praise the Lord. Which, uh, and of course, uh, the psalmist instructs the audience also to sing the Lord a new song, sing the Lord a new song. So we know that in, in our journey, uh, in this Christian journey, we have different events that happen throughout our lives, just like the, the Israelites, they had different things that happened during their journey, Abraham, uh, Isaac and Jacob, different ones had different things. Moses, they all had different events happening. So as those events happened in the lives of the, the Israelites, God's people, they would sing a new song about it. And, uh, and so it's not like you sang the same song over and over and over again, uh, but you sang a new song because of the new events that God has brought you through. And uh, I just thought that was really uh, uh, awesome in, in how they bought that out. 
Uh, each occurrence implies that God's work is so magnificent that old songs, although true, do not fully capture everything about God that is worthy singing about. The greatness and faithfulness of God is so inexhaustible that it demands us to compose new songs to attempt to us describe who God is. And so as we look on further, the, the, um, the audience is to sing this new song to the assembly of, of Chasset, Kasset, K-H-A-W-S-E-E-D. It's on page 90 in your book. Um, and uh, the Kasset are faithful people who have set themselves apart by choosing to be loyal and faithful to God. We have chose, we are people that are chosen, but we're set apart to be loyal and faithful unto God. So that's the reason to praise God. It's the reason to give him glory and honor. That's why we sing uh, songs unto God and uh, even how he bought us out of the Mari clay. Different songs that we sing tells our story and also helps us as we go through the journey in singing newer songs as well. So as you look at the church today, you also um, identify it with the church in, uh, in olden times. Verse two said, let Israel rejoice in him that made him, let the children of Zion be joyful in their king, let, the, let them praise his name in the dance, let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and, and, and harp. And of course, it's saying that Israel rejoice in him. So we got to know who they're talking to, who the Psalms is, is geared towards, who he's talking about, who needs to give God praise. And even with uh, the children of Zion, you know, because of course, Zion, <coughs> they captured the city of, the, uh, they were captured uh, in the city of the Jebusites, which becomes Jerusalem, also known as Zion. Jerusalem is also known as Zion. You know how people say, come on, Zion, give God some praise. Come on, Zion, let's lift the Lord up. Yes. So we know that's just a form of, of how we are identified. And it all comes from the Bible, comes from the Bible. And he, uh, so uh, it also deals with his special relationship with God uh, and the God of the universe. They recognize that God created everything, included them. And so he also brought the people out of the land of Egypt when they were not a people. God made them into a people by giving them laws, land, and life. He made them into the people, just like with us. We were born and shaped in iniquity, but as we were uh, coming to the kingdom of God, he, he engrafted us in and we became a people of God. He gave us laws to abide by, which is the Bible, and then he's given us a land and life to live in that land. Of course, we always think about the land being heaven, how he promised that he went to prepare a place for us. And soon he'll be coming again and we will be joining him in Beulah land. They call it Beulah land as well. And then uh, the second part of verse two hints toward the Israelites invasion of the Canaanites land that ends under David's reign. You know, David was a mighty king. He was a mighty warrior. And, uh, but at the same time, uh, <clears throat> there was a time to come to the end and then there was a ship for the next, for the next rulership. And they captured the city of the Jebusites which becomes Jerusalem, also known as Zion, which I just said. Zion was the hill where the temple and king's palace resided. It was a place where the temple and king's palace resided. You know, David wanted to build the temple. Uh, of the Lord, but because of too much blood being on his hand, of course, Solomon ended up being the one that, that built it. Uh, while the rest of the city spread about them. Let's look at verse uh, four. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek, the meek uh, with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Now God takes pleasure in his people. Can you imagine him just standing boastfully saying, these are my people. I take pleasure in them because they love me. They honor me. They worship me. These are my people. And I take pleasure in them. They take a pleasure. There's a Hebrew word, ratza, R-A-T-Z-A-H, can also mean to delight in, accept or give favor. Now, that's an awesome description of, of the people of God. 
He finds delight in his people, not because they're great, but because they're humble and lowly, humble and lowly, lowly. And the Hebrew word for beauty is, is par, P-A-A-R, which also translates as crown or adorn and ultimately means make something worth boasting about. Oh my God, God's creation. He, he, he made something, he made us. And so because we are in him now, it's really something to boast about. I'm sure he looks at, look at my people. And even, uh, you know, um, uh, I'm thinking about when Jesus was, when God was manifested in flesh and when Jesus was baptized and this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. He was boasting in, in, in the manifestation of himself basically, but he was boasting in Jesus and what he came to do. Oh, how beautiful. I'm sure that time was for him. Now, God grants salvation, which is the Hebrew word, is Yeshua, Yeshua. Uh, a lot of people are now, I think it's the Hebrew Israelites, the apostolic Hebrew Israelites. They baptize in the name of Yeshua, Hamasiah, which still means salvation, still means Jesus. But we use the English word Jesus in the name of Jesus, because that's what the Bible says, to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin, or saying that Yeshua is not important, but we go according to the salvation plan and how we are baptized. Everything, everything we do is in the name of Jesus. But God grants salvation because it's a Hebrew word, Yeshua. In the New Testament, that's the dispensation of grace. So we're using terminology in that dispensation, which the name is Jesus. Okay. Our victory, not because it's deserved, but because God is merciful. Yeshua is the root for the name Joshua, Joshua, which means Jehovah saves, Jehovah saves. It's still Old Testament because of the Hebrew word that's there. As we look at Psalms 150, uh, one through six. <laughs> praise ye the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. As noted above, hallelujah means what? Praise, praise the, Lord. the Lord. Hallelujah means praise the Lord. It's kind of like a call and response when we say praise the Lord. And people now say hallelujah because that's what it means. It's kind of answer me back. You're, you're giving me a command to praise the Lord. So when we say the command, praise the Lord, hallelujah. It should all, we should always say hallelujah. But we, in greeting each other, we'll say praise the Lord. It's just a, it's an apostolic greeting up <laughs> yeah. Between apostolic and Pentecostal greeting, uh, that is something that we have adopted as a greeting. Uh, but we're not uh, looking at the greeting here. We're looking at the, the command to praise the Lord. Uh, and so the word for God in this verse is L. L means God. You know, we say the study of God, uh, theology, the uh, study of God, and can refer to other gods and even uh, refer to a strong human. But the psalmist, however, in no certain terms, begins the psalm with an instruction and specification. The instruction to praise and the term specifies to whom the praise belongs to. The thing is, we've got to recognize that when we're in worship, when we're in the sanctuary, or even now we're outside, wherever we are, uh, we are praising God. And I think with this, it also helps us to keep things vertical, not horizontal, because anything we do is unto the Lord, uh, and everything has to be a vertical praise. And sometimes praise leaders, and I've been guilty of this myself, uh, <clears throat> praise leaders say, praise the Lord, everybody. And they'll get and people are not responding. Then they'll holler again, praise the Lord, everybody. So that means that we have moved it from the vertical praise of God into horizontal praise because we're waiting for the people to respond so we can see the effects of what we're giving. But it's not about us. It's not us making you praise. And, and a lot of times they get, they get frustrated because how come y'all not praising the Lord? Y'all need to give God praise. Well, that's their business. That's their business. 
Your mm -hmm. job is to praise God. Get up and praise the Lord, not fuss at the people. It's just a command. Praise the Lord, everybody. It depends on who they are, where they are, if they don't praise. Some people have a quiet spirit. Oh, praise the Lord. Everybody's not going to jump up, holler, and shout. They have their own way of praising the Lord. But if we keep it vertical, if we keep it ver vertical, you know, just we stand there, Lord, I give you praise and immediately give it to him. Don't make it vertical and horizontal. Don't make it about the people and you're trying to get the people to move. If you keep it vertical, let God move the people. You give God praise within your spirit. And as you give him praise, the anointing come up on you and then it exude into the atmosphere. I had to learn that the hard way. I was standing, <laughs> I was leading praise and worship was some years ago. And I was standing, I said, praise the Lord, everybody. And they sitting there. I said, praise the Lord, everybody. And I began to fuss at them, tell them, how come you're not, the Lord has been so good and you're not moving. And I was going on what I did. <laughs> I turned my back to the people. I said, that's fine. Don't praise them. But I already had an attitude <laughs> that wasn't right. I turned my back. I'm going to mm. turn my back to the world. And I just began to praise the Lord. The Lord checked my spirit. He said, since when are they praising you? <laughs> he checked me right then. And I had to apologize. I turned back and said, look, it's not even about that. I had to get myself together. You know, so we have to be careful even in praising the Lord and leading praise and worship that we keep it vertical and not try to make it horizontal where we get the response, but let God get the response from the people. I ask a question, uh -huh. Ms. Morrison. Um, yes, we're praising this unto the Lord and it is vertical, but is it I'm sorry. always uh, verbal? Uh, is uh, usually it should be because it's, it's saying that everything that had breath praise the Lord uh, can be can be verbal, but I believe another form of praise is in being humble and submissive unto the Lord. Uh, but it depends on the context of the scripture. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So in this context, it's it's a command for the people to praise God. So that means it is allowed. It is verbal. Mm -hmm. There are times when you can sit and you can meditate and your mind has a mind of adoration unto the Lord. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But this is more dealing with the sanctuary and where we are uh, in the temple or even where you are. Sometimes he wants, you, he wants you to verbally say how you feel about him because you're showing forth your emotions verbally, verbally. And even with the, uh, even with the instruments, and we'll get into that a little bit later, even with the instruments, you know, it's a sound that he wants to come from the yeah. instruments as well as a sound that he wants to come from the people. You know, it's say, clap your hands, uh, oh, you people, shout unto God with the voice of triumph. It's a sound that he wants to hear from the soul that he has saved, yeah. So most of the time it is verbal, but there are times when, Lord, I just worship you, and you just sit and you're just meditating on him and worship. That's a form of meditation and a form of worship. Uh, but there, usually when it comes to praise, it's allowed, and even worship sounds allowed. So, I'm sorry, did I ask you a question? you want you to pray yes. aloud. Mm -hmm. Pray and praise. You said pray aloud? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, sometimes he wants you to pray aloud. Because when we pray aloud, it does something to the atmosphere. And the prince of the, you know, we always have a prince of the power of the air, which is Satan. His demons uh -huh. are dispatched in different regions. And so as we open our mouths and pray, we're coming against the, the workings of the enemy. So you're right about that. Okay. So now the word for sanctuary, the Psalms instructs the audience. So it, it kind of tells you right here in the context what is basically instructing uh, uh, us to do. The Psalm instructs the audience on the arenas in which to praise God and the abilities for which to praise him. Uh, the first arena is God's sanctuary. The word for sanctuary is Kodesh, Kodesh, K-O-H-D-E-S-H, which means the holy place. You know how they would go into the temple 
And there were certain sections of the temple where especially the priests would go into the Holy of Holies. But then in, as you look at the diagram of the temple, there was a space for uh, the outer court. And certain ones would be in the outer court. There would be a, a court for the women, a court for the men, kind of like that way. You go on in, it's still like just the outer courts. And that's like the praise. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. So that's the outer court, but worship is more done in the inner court, the holy of holies, because that's really bringing in the presence of God. It, it often refers to the place where God's presence dwells, but then the tabernacle and the, and the latter and, la, and later the temple, God's presence dwell in the holy of holies, because you know, that's where the Ark of the Covenant was and everything that was in that. And that's where the priests would go up and offer the sacrifice, you know, for the sins of the people. And if he wasn't right when he went in, those little bells would stop ringing and he'd have, they'd have to pull him out because he was, he was tainted and he could not offer up the sacrifices. So in many ways, the holiness of, of all of Israel radiated from the holy of holies. So we look at the command to praise God and the firmament could also be an instruction to angels who resides in heaven. As you know, the firmness deal with the heavens can address God's heavenly court. So we're here on earth giving God praise, but there's still praise and worship going on in heaven. Because you know, around the thrones, they're crying, holy, holy, holy. They're constantly giving God praise and worship. So verse two, praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. The psalmist moves from the arenas for praising God to reasons to praise God. The first reason is manifested in God's mighty acts. And we can see how all the different acts that he did for the children of Israel, as well as in our lives. The word for mighty acts is Gaborah, G-E-B-U-R-A-H. It is used to refer to works and capabilities that belong to a particular entity. And we have the scriptures here about judges and, and through all that time, the mighty acts, how he, you know, uh, uh, brought them out of the different areas of captivity and how he helped them to win the war and, and all different types of things. Mighty acts, uh, powers or works that only God can do. Uh, how he parted the Red Sea. You know, those are mighty acts. Only God can do what God can do. The psalmist then implores the worshipers to praise God for his excellent greatness. The phrase suggests that worshipers are to praise God because he surpasses or excels the very concept of greatness. And, you know, like the song says, nobody greater, nobody greater than yes. him. Nobody can do what God does. Nobody can. Nobody greater than him. He is so amazing that great uh, is insufficient to describe him so we try to find a word to describe God and greatness is uh, anemic in describing God's works God's activity in the world and in our lives surpasses exceeds goes beyond greatness God is so great that even greatness is more than excellent greatness is more than excellent let's look at verse three Psalm, uh, some, uh, verse three, praise him with the sound of the trumpet, praise him with the psalter and harp, but praise him with the timbrel and dance, praise him with string instruments and organs, praise him upon the loud sounding cymbals, uh, praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. I'm gonna kind of skip through that because I wanna go back through this in a minute when we get to the PowerPoint. And verse six, that everything that had breath, praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord. And it means God took time to craft humans in his image and then personally breathe in them the breath of life, Genesis 2 and 7. So life itself then becomes its own reason to praise the Lord. And, um, uh, you know, if we, if we can in, uh, exhale, we can inhale, we can exhale. That's enough to give God praise right there, yes. just that breath, especially during this time of COVID. Yeah. Many people have to have breathing machines and all types of things mm -hmm. to help them breathe. 
And even in times when I've got the bronchitis, I have to always have an inhaler with me to make sure I get enough breath, you know, mm-hmm. but to be able to even do that, that's still enough to praise yes. God for. Right. And God took time. Okay, I already read that. The repetition of praise ye the Lord could be a statement of emphasis. Anytime you see anything in the Bible, this repetition, like verily, verily. I say rejoice again, I say rejoice. Anytime uh, there's a phrase repeated, it means it's emphasized what he's, what they're saying or what they're wanting you to do. Uh, when we really mean something, we accentuate the statement by saying it again, over and over again, to make sure people do have it. or have a clear understanding of that. Now I'm gonna go to the PowerPoint and then we're gonna talk here. And after that, then we'll open for dialogue, I'm sorry. (coughs) Can you all see it? Uh, Yes. Okay. Is it full screen on your part? Yes. Okay, great, okay. So I can see the the sidebars too of what's going to be coming up next okay. is that what you want us to see or you just want us to see that first slide that first yeah, i just want you to see the slide so am i supposed to be doing okay. something else? so you should take it over to after you should after you go to um um uh, i can't think of the home stream It'll over on the side it says um start from beginning in that first column next to should be up in the corner. Slide presentation, then over on the, to your far, yeah, over that way. It should be a little bit further. It should, sh- there you go. Okay. Start from beginning. Okay, uh, good. Thank you yeah, so there much. There you go. Now you got it. Okay. And then to go to the next one, okay, I got it. I yeah, just click on, yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Can y'all so with that? that? With yes. that, can you move the picture over to your right? Well, what it does, the presenter sees that what's going to be shown next, but as far as presentation, just the viewers would see the slide that she wants us to sleep, see right now. Okay. So Thanks. she was trying to see all of them. <laughs> mm-hmm. I can send <laughs> out when I'll I see when I see the when I send the replay tomorrow, I'll add the slide in there. Oh, so you okay. can pull it up and see see the slides as well. Okay. So let's go back to verse three, Psalms 150 and verse three. It says, Praise him, uh, praise him with the sound of the trumpet. So these are the instruments, the Hebrew uh, musical instruments that were used in praise. Uh, and so uh, is, even though you see them here, you got the Never will didn't show up good. It's kind of like blear. And then the leer, you've got another instrument here. You've got the bell. Uh, and then you've got the, those look like some type of sticks. It's the trumpet. You've got the shofar. And then you've got the harp. So I do want to bring that in. Even with the shofar, we'll just, okay, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. The psalmist tells the worshipers where to praise then why to praise, and finally, the psalmist says how to praise with musical instruments. I'm not understanding people's, uh, there's another understanding as far as denomination is concerned, where they really went wrong, whether we're to praise God with instruments or not. When the Bible clearly states to praise him with instruments, I know that we are instruments of praise, but it clearly states in the Bible to praise him with these instruments. And so the uh, the psalmist depicts a symphony of praise. Each instrument is mentioned in the people's place and times. You always go back and read that. Now the trumpet, which is the shofar right here, can you see me pointing to it? Uh The shofar is a ram's horn. It was a symbol of three things. God's voice, God's, God's voice, God's victory, and God's freedom. God's voice, God's victory, and God's freedom. Now, the shofar was a reminder of God's thundering voice at Mount Sinai. That's the sound of the shofar, which was the ram's horn. That's Exodus 19 chapter. 
Later, the Israelites blasted the shofar to announce the victory God had given them over the people of Jericho. And then finally, the priests were to blow the shofar of the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, and in the 15th year in order to proclaim the year of, of Jubilee. They're uh, usually doing the Feast of Trumpets. There's a Feast of Trumpets that happens. And in the Feast of Trumpets, they blow the trumpets. But what they blow in is shofars. It is beautiful. You can look it up on YouTube and, and look and say, um, the, uh, the Feast of Trumpets. And maybe they'll show different people uh, blowing the shofar. When I worked at CBN uh, during the Feast of Trumpets and in the first part of the year, uh, which was basically September, they would uh, do the Feast of Trumpets. They would stand outside and you'd have different people blowing their shofars. It's a certain sound that the shofars make. But also I think about the sound of, when it's the sound of freedom. So I'm thinking about uh, what the scripture said, um, <coughs> Uh, I can't think of the beginning of it. So, and the trumpet shall sound. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and the trumpet shall sound. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. The trumpet, which is the shofar sound, will sound. And when that trumpet sounds, we all going to be called up. That is a time of freedom. We'll be free from this earth. Yes, we'll Lord. be Thank taken you. from mortal to immortality. That's yeah. when that's the the main trumpet that we're waiting to hear. We're yeah. waiting to hear that trumpet sound, which is the sound of a shofar. Okay. Now yeah. we're also looking at. I will look. Go down here. Now there's the timbrel and tabret, which is basically the same thing. So you know, in the tim the 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 tamarine is known as a timbrel, and then of course that's the tabri. I think it just has strings on the uh, on the tamarine. It's a small drum or tamarine a tabret. The antiquity of this musical instrument appears from the scriptural allusions to it, usually played by women. Now, you know, uh, Miriam did what? Played the tamarine. Crossed, that's right, she, she sure did. Uh, began to sing a song. At that time, she sung a new song, right? Yes. She sung a new song. Okay, so let's go on down to the harp. The harp is a stringed musical instrument that has a number of individual strings running at an angle to its soundboard. The strings are plucked with the fingers. The harps can be made and played in various ways, including standing or sitting uh, and in orchestras or concerts. And this is like the old harp. It's a little mm -hmm. small. Mm -hmm. You know how David played. Mm -hmm. This is more of the newer harp. Then you got the psaltery. The psaltery is a musical instrument supposed to have been a kind of lyre, lyre, kind of like an our harp. Twelve strings. The Hebrew word nevel, so rendered, is translated viol. So it kind of reminds you of that. You see that long, the long stick here, how they use on violins. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sure they have reconstructed a lot of instruments up to the way we look how they look now even with the guitar it's still a stringed instrument okay mm -hmm. you'll see the scriptures here where you can reference that too the word that's rendered is cal chaldiac which is supposed to be a, a word of greek origin denoting instrument of the heart mm -hmm. these are stringed instruments so we we recognize a lot of these instruments now of course the heart uh, but then you got the the banjo, <laughs> country music. <Yeah. laughs> but then there's the guitar, some of them are the bass, there's the violin, and there's mm -hmm. another form. I think they kind of sit that flat and pick it. But these are also stringed instruments. This is an upright bass mm -hmm. that they use. You know what I'm saying? In the orchestra or any most 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 jazz bands use the upright ba uh, uh, bass in like the uh, old time classical jazz. Mm -hmm. Now loud and high sounding symbols. The symbols, <coughs> excuse me. So zel zelim, am I saying that right? From a root meaning to tinkle. Musical mm -hmm. instruments consisting of two convex pieces of brass and held in the hand 
which were clashed together to produce a loud clanging sound, castanets, loud cymbals, high sounding cymbals, consisted of two large plates, one held as also in each hand. Mm -hmm. This right here is considered a hi-hat. A hi-hat is on a drum and uh, um, <clears throat> you see where right here, he's uh, on the high sound of cymbal. These are just standalone cymbals up over the drum. But this right here is what you call a hi-hat. So it's more or less a lower cymbal, but it's clashed together to give like a pss, pss sound. You know, when people are playing the drum, they go pss, pss. That's, and then sometimes you could just uh, uh, play on top of it and it'll be like a clashing noise. But these cymbals are like high sounding cymbals because as the drummer, you know how sometimes in service, there'll be, ah. <laughs> and then, then the drummers, they'll be clashing on the, on the cymbals. That's where those sounds come from. The, these are high sounding cymbals right here. They're standalone cymbals, but they make a loud noise, but they bring such a sound in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Bring such a sound in the atmosphere. Let's see. So I would definitely send this to you uh, <coughs> in, the, uh, in the replay. Anybody have any questions about that? Or Are y'all still on here? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Let me ask you a question about that shofar. The, the mouthpiece, the blowing in, everything is open, flowing through the end of it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because it starts off with like a little small piece, uh -huh. and then it starts to be, get bigger as it goes out. And if you think about the trumpet, you know, how the, the way the trumpet is made, you know, because there's like a little piece right here, but it's the trunk of the trumpet comes down. It's kind of slim, then it gets bigger, then it comes out to this like big, big, um, this big part. You know how the trumpets, like in the marching bands, you know, they playing the trumpet, you know, they marching. So it's kind of like the same. It also is like a symbol of the same type of sound. It starts small and then it turns out to be big. So it can make a lot yeah, of sound longer than that. It's some longer than that. But the shofar mm -hmm. and then makes some, is turn. uh, some turns. It just depends on the type of trumpet or, uh, you know, tuba. Some of them are called tubas because they're so big. Mm -hmm. But that shofar, it, it, you know, it is a symbol, a symbol. Uh, part of worship uh, and how it's blasted during those times of victory. Mm -hmm. And one other instrument that was on there, it looked like it had, it was on with the wind instrument. Mm -hmm. It was like a flute. Yeah, like a flute. Had different, had several different um, pieces together. Yes. And they were blowing to it. Uh -huh. so it looked like a flute. Yeah. Like a flute. Mm, yes, yeah. a lot. A lot of the instruments they used then uh, have been evidently recreated. You know, are developed. Mm -hmm. You know, for better use. Especially now we have uh, electrical instruments. We still have the acoustic guitars yeah. and and acoustic uh, drums and things like that. Uh, but now there are electrical drums. There are electrical guitars, bass. You know, and even the horns. They have in a certain type of. Um, um, Elect, uh, electrical part that goes to that to where they can play it and it's just really it's just you know ma micro uh what do you call it oh jesus i can't even think tonight where you can hear it through the microphone but it's a certain thing that goes into the horn now where they don't need to stand to the microphone uh -huh. Uh -huh. they just automatically blow into that and it amplifies what i'm trying to say yeah it amplifies so um, in, in just in looking at the lesson, especially when it came to the different instruments and, and how significant they were in worship. Uh, and even now, even the organ, uh, I thought I had one about the organ. I must have went on past that one. But even with the organ, I think it dealt with the organ as well. The organ, of course, is a stringed instrument. But back in the day, they had a lot of the pipes you know, a lot of the Catholic churches had beautiful cathedrals and they played those organs 
and had all the pipes in it and all the sounds that came from that organ reminded me of all the instruments that was in Lucifer when he was in heaven. Because he had a whole lot of uh, pipes and, and sounds coming out of him just ah, probably sound like a hallelujah chorus coming out of him with the instruments and the voices. <laughs> wow. That was something else. But because he got lifted up in pride, now we have different instruments that could be played. And so the thing is, we gotta be careful even in, in playing the instruments. Sometimes people can be high and lifted up within their gifts. So either way, whichever way you worship and praise the Lord, some people can really dance. I, 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 I know there's a, the, there's the, I call it the cute shout. <laughs> that looks, that the look cute shout, but that is a practice dance. That's a practice mm -hmm. dance. Because if, when you look across the board of Christendom and certain cultures, because it's mainly in our culture, certain cultures, especially the Church of God in Christ, they got that dance. We didn't have that. We didn't start right. off with that. Some people may have some footwork or whatever, but it wasn't like everybody's doing the same thing. Everybody, they, most of us was bucking and becking, hey, <laughs> running and jumping. Now everybody got that cute dance. Come on, we got to stay cute, honey. If you don't let God just uh, let you go on and praise him, <laughs> I'd love to see Sister Bush. Honey, it gets all over her. Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And then she gets, <laughs> you know. Yes, man. But I mean, I know people have the cute, and, and even real. though children have learned that dance, yes. and so they'll say, oh, I got it now. No, that you ain't got it. Where, where is the dance <laughs> unto the Lord? The dance yeah. unto the Lord. You know, I mean, come on. And then after a while, you can tell if they do that little cute dance, the Holy right. Ghost really gets a hold of them, then they got to, whoo, I'm like, that's it right there. Let him move you in that right there. <laughs> mm -hmm. So. I mean, you know, people like uh, and people like to dance. I used to dance a lot in the world, love to dance and stuff. But honey, when it yeah, comes to it. praising the Lord, I ain't got time to be trying to be cute and get a certain little step together. Honey, I got to go on and go in. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm not down in the people that do the dance. Please don't don't get me wrong with that. Right. It's, it's, it, right. it looks good. It looks good, and they. You know, you stay in place, you're not all out of order, whatever, but it's still, but once that Holy Ghost hits them, you can tell because there's a dip that they do. It's like, oh, okay. I'm like, yeah, that right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, any questions? Mm -hmm. Sister Tara, you got your That's hand all up. I can do. <laughs> Sister Tara, did you have something you want to say? Oh, yeah. Uh, just, I was going to say, uh, I know a lot of the younger kids now, they try to incorporate the worldly dance with the church dance. And I was like, uh, you can't do that. And it's like, well, it'd be all right. I was like, okay, when you get that strike, you stop. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So it's, it's all right. I mean, you know, and the praise dance is different because that is strategic steps, but it's strategically unto the Lord. So right. it's a difference with that as well. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's it's a strategic language of dance unto the Lord. That liturgical dance is beautiful. It's beautiful. Uh, a lot of the Jewish weddings, if you look at it, like the different Jewish weddings, they have their little dances. They would get in a circle and they would go around, they would dip. You know, so dance has always been a part of worship. But I think uh, then it comes individual uh, worship as well. Any other questions or comments? <coughs> Uh, can the uh, different forms of uh, dance, for instance, you uh, started, I'll call you in, the, in, in Sunday school, uh, it, can it be similar to prayer where you start off somewhat in the natural and then it moves to the next level as you, you in tune with the Lord and then you are just out there totally in the spirit? So when we're looking at the dance sometimes too, and I watch the praise, uh, little, little praise dances, they're so awesome. They, uh, Sister Bush and, and, and uh, the group, but they start out uh, and they are, they are just wonderful. And then the next thing you know, by the end of it, they're still staying together, whatever, but you can see the anointing you can. on them more as they move through their, their riches. Mm -hmm. You really can. I remember they were they were dancing to um, 
was it it was it open heaven system open Sister Bush? heaven open heaven yes, open i think heaven. it was at the region five or, or something they yes, they they, they danced to oh my god it started out yeah. you know they was you know started out that way and they was you know all in sync and next thing you know that worship came in that place and some yeah. of them couldn't they just begin to just worship mm -hmm. that, that's when you know that yes, they, Lord. It was just as unto the lord and the lord uh just received their worship he just came in the room i mean everybody began to worship so that's when you know it's vertical it's a vertical unto the lord so this, this has been a good lesson. I appreciate the opportunity to teach it tonight. Sorry for the coughing. Sister Hicks, did you have anything you wanted to say? Right. Glad to have you in our room. No, I just like to say I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. It's, it's very good. Amen. Just glad to so thank you for the invite to be able to join you all. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yes, yes. Amen. Anybody else? Any questions or comments? I'd like to thank thank you for breaking everything down and explaining the different um, uh, rituals and things that were going on. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to thank you for that. Um, welcome. And it's right there in your lesson as well. So you always refer back to that. Um, some things I may have shared might not be there, but the majority of it is straight from that lesson. Mm -hmm. and it's amazing because we look at the psalm and we think uh we always think psalms the first thing we think of is david but there are many other uh authors in it as well even though he wrote the majority of them but there's other authors as well someone has something they had to say yes i guess it's a comment slash question um about i guess maybe 20 years ago i went with a, an apostolic church we fellowship with in alabama to Cedartown, Georgia, and when the pastor was preaching, he got excited, and he started praising God. I looked at his footwork. I said, this reminds me of James Brown, and he did it again. <laughs> then somebody on the guitar, he was playing. He had a chord, electric guitar. He was spinning and spinning, and he never fell, and it reminded me of Chuck Berry. So my thing is, I wonder that James Brown and Chuck Berry go to a hole in this church 60 years ago, they saw it and put it in their routine. Because I'm like, can we look at somebody's dance and tell, okay, this is from God and this is not? I guess that's mm -hmm. kind of what my question is about. Okay. I think during those times, Chuck Berry, I think I looked at a documentary about Chuck Berry and even Elvis Presley. Uh, I think his grandmother was Pentecostal. So a lot of the things that they, that they adapted, especially James Brown during that time, uh, as the Holy Ghost moved upon people, they had that footwork. I'm not um, down in the footwork that people do, but when everybody is doing that footwork, you know, it's a learned dance. But yes, yeah, some are moved uh, really by the Holy Ghost just to move and and like that way. Uh, another example is is um, Elder Ellaby. You know, uh, he came out of Greater Bethel and he would get to singing and praising the Lord when he first got saved. Uh, he would, he was, he, he got the Holy, when he got the Holy Ghost and he would be shouting in the sanctuary and he would do that footwork every time. He's still doing it today. This is where the Holy Ghost moves him. And so some people do have uh, that type of dance. You know, it's very unique. God just moves them and they have that dance. They, you know, and all that's wonderful. I think it's, it's unique. And I think you, you can tell by your spirit where your spirit will, uh, will, uh, will agree whether it's the Holy Ghost or whether it's just a move that they're doing. But yeah, Chuck Berry and uh, James Brown, all of them, yeah, uh, especially Elvis Presley. He got mm -hmm. all stuff from James Brown then, but his mom, his grandmother did go to uh, a Pentecostal church where they moved like that. Thank you. Did I answer your question? <laughs> Yeah, you did, yeah. Okay, yeah. but yeah, so I'm not taking away from people's unique way of praising God, even in footwork. Uh, but mm -hmm. but I'm, I was mainly talking about the, it's a certain little movement every, when everybody's got that same move. <laughs> even mm -hmm. the children, you know, like, oh, uh, okay. <laughs> so. Any other questions or comments? 
Okay, well, we thank the Lord for you all being on here tonight. Uh, uh, Dr. Chris, do you have anything you want to add? I think I think we're having something Sunday night, right? Yes. You want to talk about that? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, we are trying to help, uh, especially the young people, focus on and tie right into our lessons. The Lord is always to be praised every day. And so we know October the 31st is out there and it is called Halloween. We know we don't celebrate Halloween, we celebrate the Lord. And so what we are uh, asking the young people to do, and what everybody in Sunday school is join us at five o'clock to approximately seven o'clock. And we're doing some activities that would pretty much help the students to uh, focus on Bible characters. And so we're asking everyone who wished to come in dressed in their favorite uh, Bible character or historic char character, we're adding uh, some academic pieces to, to uh, this also. And so it is a nice started out where we would just watch a movie to kind of get the, the kids off the street during that time period. Um, and so um, then as we talked about it with the little team that got together, it kind of expanded into doing some other things. So if you're, if you are free, we would, we just asking everybody to please come out, bring your children and your grandchildren and your great grandchildren. This is a time for you to bond with them. It is Zoom. So everybody can come in on Sunday morning. We're putting together, uh, it's called uh, a coloring coloring page and it also in an activity book is gonna kind of look like uh, this when we get through. So we're making about a hundred copies so we were hoping that everybody would join us and they can go back later uh, finding their own Bible characters. Those of you who like puzzles, there's some things in puzzles in there. Uh, not only Bible characters as we say, there's some historical uh, uh, pictures in their coloring pages. Uh, and so uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Sister Keller is taking the lead. Sister, uh, 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 I miss up her name, uh, her, her first name, Aisha. Aisha Keller, she came one Sunday. This is how it originated when she was just, are uh, we having anything for the children on October 31st? And uh, it's like, well, we know we don't celebrate uh, Halloween, but it's just something we can do to keep them a business. So this kind of originated from that. We took it to board meeting. We said, well, why don't we just watch a movie on the lawn? Well, the, the equipment and all that was all booked out and rented out. So we couldn't do the um, the movie on the lawn. So we asked Bishop Mary that we could do, um, do a Zoom. And so that's where this is written. So in the Zoom and, and they talked about it, they're gonna have a scavenger hunt, a part of this. They're gonna have the, uh, the little snack bag so that we'll be passing those out at the eight o'clock and at the uh, at the uh, 11 o'clock service we're telling everybody to save them until you come on air because when we watch our movie we'll be doing snacks uh we want to see others to see like the little children who've been going to uh the classes on saturdays there'll be some little videos in there where they can jump around moving around and we call children 18 months to over 100 years old if you just without getting engaged in that we have a uh, costume that will be judged, and we have some of the young people who are going to serve as judges and others. Um, what else we have out there? So it's just going to be a lot out there going on. We're going to try to stay within the two-hour time period. We have the little movies, so those who want to come off early, they have the little children, because they're going to get tired out of whatever. They can you know, have, the, have the little fun. And then those who want to stay on, the uh, movie, and it's a movie that's gonna be hopefully a child-based and uh, adults. We're having an issue with the movies that we movie we wanna show, the big movie at the end, uh, because we can't get them. You can get them in your home, but you can't hardly share them. So we're still kind of working on what uh, movie, but it's gonna be something out there. So it's gonna be fun. Uh, it's gonna be uh, age, or age appropriate for everybody. And so just everybody come in and join. This is an outreach that we're doing, a ministry that Bishop Mary is asking all of us to focus on. So get the Zoom address, which is the same as this address, out to others, everybody, as much as they possibly can, so that we're celebrating 
the Lord Jesus Christ. And so as I, we go through this, uh, our lessons, this is what we're trying to uh, uh, reiterate to the kids that the Lord has done so much for us. We don't care what day it is. We're not going to let Satan have any of the days. We're going to just come in uh, doing some fun things. Uh, and hopefully this will also attract young people and, and as well as old the saints back into Sunday school. We've been out there for about two years, kind of Zoom. And so very few people probably all over uh, are actually in their actual Sunday school class. So one other goal of this is to kind of help us get back kind of on track because we're getting ready to go back in uh, uh, probably soon with this vaccination being out there for five kids, five and older. So, um, and so uh, thank you for allowing me uh, to kind of explain. I know it's kind of lengthy, but I uh, just kind of get it out there to everybody to please come on Sunday from five to seven. Everybody is welcome. Everybody is invited. And it's just given us an opportunity to fellowship with it. And the theme, lastly, is um, hallelujah, family gathering. Uh, that's that's going to be our theme. That's what we're going to be focusing on. So you all come as your favorite character. I'm going to try to come in as my favorite character. I love the, the uh, well, I'm not going to give that away. But uh, everybody <laughs> dress in your favorite character. And there will be three uh, awards, I guess. So first place, second place, third place for that. And then there will be other little things out there, uh, prizes and, and whatever uh, uh, for what we're doing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. That's going to be fun. Do, and you all have a flyer that you all are going to uh, send? Yes, I will. Uh, everybody in uh, Marshall, if you will, I will um, uh, put the put the uh, first page of the booklet out there. But I can also uh, send the uh, booklet uh, electronically, if say somebody's out of the city or whatever, they want to download it for later. So we can we can do that. And if you have uh, email addresses you want to send to me, uh, just send that to me, and then we'll make sure we get something uh, out there to everybody. But we're calling our nieces and we're calling our nephews. And we were in um, Athens this past weekend. It was Linda's grandchildren. We had a nice celebration. So we're trying to get them here. They come to Sunday school as far away as they are. So we just we can reach everybody uh, in, in this whole process. And if they are not here, like we said, we can electronically send them the books and everything else um, and uh, for them to, to uh, have it. They're probably about to get those snacks or wherever they are down there. There is a flyer, and I think we passed out the flyer. We've been passing out the flyer for the last two or three weeks regarding the incident, but there will be Sunday, the booklet will be uh, the flyer because it has the Zoom address and all the information for getting in uh, on mm -hmm. that. And so we're going to uh, make about 100 copies of that and have them uh, ready to go out there with the snack bags. Okay. Do you have a flyer that that uh, that they're going to upload to you uh, to Facebook? Is there um, an, electro an electrical or a, a file of the um, flyer? I guess whoever created the flyer, I guess they can. Okay, I created the flyer, you... so I can send um, send some. I'm not on uh, uh, Facebook, Facebook, and so I'm not you. But but that would be great to get it out there for those who have. So if you want me need for me to send you the flyer, those who um, put it on your Facebook play, uh, page, mm -hmm. that would. Be I think that'd be good. Favorite. Yeah. Okay, that'd be good. Okay. We can advertise it that way. Yes. That'd be so good. All right. Anybody else? Evangelist Lowry, you have anything you want to add? Or Brother Gary? No, no. Right. Everything was good. Enjoyed the lesson. Right. Oh, one last thing. It's Sisters feeling come. better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm still got a little cough every now and then, but I think it'll be okay. Well, let's say we still are collecting the wigs for the uh, uh, for uh, the uh, cancer uh, survivors or patients. So uh, we're doing that too. So just kind of get it out there to everybody. Bringing a wig, I'm going to take to her Monday as many as we have. 
but then we can continue to collect them even after that uh, time period. Okay, that's great. That's good. And Mom, I would I would like to thank everybody who donated to my care package on Sunday. I got home Sunday. I was so happy, and you know things was looking better. And I got a message that my aunt had found my one of her her baby son dead oh, no. in her house. <laughs> so uh, this is the Lockridge family. If you would just keep the Lockridge family in prayer, I appreciate it. Thank you. you was he local? Huh? Was it, are they local? Are they yeah. out of the city? And here in Nashville? Uh-huh. They live around the corner from my mom in mm -hmm. Hanks Manor. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry to hear that. Thank you. Uh, uh, I have I have a prayer request of Angus Martha. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to keep my neighbor, Miss Deborah Collins, in prayer. She's prepping for surgery. Okay. Any other requests? Anyway, we ask the Satara Cook if you would close us out in prayer. Let every heart pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for all your many blessings. Lord, we ask asking right now that you come and see about your people, Lord God. Lord, we thank you for all that you have done, Lord. We thank you for what you're going to do. Lord, we believe, we declare it's done, Lord God. Lord, we're asking that you bless Sister Bess and her family right now in the time of bereavement, Lord God. Lord, give them strength. Lord, give them knowledge, Lord God. Help them as they go through this difficult time. Lord, I ask right now that you bless Miss Deborah, Lord God, as she's prepared for this surgery, Lord God. Lord, cover the doctor's eyes and their hands, Lord God. We ask to bless the superintendent and all the ones on the line and Bishop Merritt. And Lord, we ask that you bless the ones who are battling with COVID and all of the different diseases, Lord God. All these things we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Beautiful. Thank bless you. you. Thank you. Good all. class. I enjoyed it. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Good class. Good, 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 night. Good, night. good night. Good night. Have a 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 good night.